Hello and welcome. Welcome to Moodle MOOC 6 and uh, the final week. I hope you can see me better. Turned on the lights. Uh, this is uh, Nelly Deutsch. If you could add in the chat box uh, where you're coming to us from and where you are exactly. It's a Thursday, May 28. And um, we're on WizIQ in the live online class. And I see we've got Nancy, Ella, Judith, Nevis. Wonderful. And where is Tom? <laughs> right. All right. So Moodle MOOC uh, 6 is uh, in its last uh, few sessions. Uh, we've had uh, quite a few webinars so far. And we've got uh, Minecraft with Dr. Lee Graham and Rosemary from Bolivia, as well as, uh, here we go, Guyana, Guyana, and Len and Harry, who's going to join Len, and they'll be discussing Moodle best practices at their college. So um, let's get started. Um, feel free to use the chat box as we go, as you know and a little bit about our presenter. And there is Tom. Hello, Ella. Uh, I've gone over your uh, amazing PowerPoint presentations, the tutorials that you've created for uh, the uh, Moodle training. And it's just a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. And I invite everyone to go over to uh, the Moodle training area and uh, just watch the video recordings. I'm adding them to uh, the playlist for Moodle MOOC 6. Uh, you could probably Google it. So they're there, but some of them are not. So you're invited to watch them. They really, really are super amazing. All right, for some reason, there we go. All right, so Tom Hodgers uh, is originally from the UK, but he's been living in uh, South America, Venezuela specifically, for the last 20, 38 years, uh, which is um, a lot. And uh, a little bit about him, he's a retired scientist, uh, and you can see that he looks like the bad scientist. Um, he's been facilitating uh, Moodle MOOCs. He started uh, with Moodle for Teachers, I believe he said 2010, and he's taken all the courses, including managers and admin of a Moodle uh, website. He doesn't have his own Moodle website yet, but I'm sure he will very soon. Uh, you can see that um, he teaches by Moodle at 100% online through Moodle in Spanish. He teaches culture and language, also for Japanese, English, and Oriental uh, students. He teaches uh, philosophy, digital media, and Moodle. He's studying for his doctorate, so uh, we're looking forward to seeing what he comes up with. And I hope he enjoys the process. He's not here right now. Uh, there are some issues in Venezuela, but we're going to have Tom here anyways, since this is a virtual class, which means that everything is virtual, even though there's reality, as you know, behind the virtual. He uh, has co-facilitated and still <laughs> is co-facilitating Moodle for Teachers, Connecting Online, ELTT, and Blog Festivals. and. MOOCs. Uh, Tom is an amazing volunteer. He uh, not only is he a passionate learner, but he enjoys helping facilitate uh, learning and help out. In general, he's an amazing friend and colleague, and uh, he'll be watching this. So uh, feel free to add in the chat box how much you love Tom and how grateful you are for everything he's done for you. And you can write down what he's done for you as we go. So it's nice to have the testimonials even in the chat box. Thank you for your introduction, Dr. Nelly. Hello everybody, Tom Hodges here. 
If you're watching this video it's because I've switched to plan B. Connection to the internet from Venezuela has become very sporadic, and unreliable for me. Mainly due to techno-political problems. You may be wondering what the title of my presentation means, multi-platform, multilingual, virtual presentations in the multiverse. Let me explain. The idea came to me while participating in the SL MOOC 15 last month. Many people refer to Second Life and other virtual worlds used in education, as the multiverse, the multi, virtual, universe. I think that from an educator's, and even the participant's point of view, this nomenclature should be extended to include anything that can be used on, or offline, in virtual education. I won't be talking about educational sites in Second Life in this presentation. That was covered amazingly in the SL MOOC 15. In the opening ceremony of SL MOOC 15, we were introduced to the layout of the MOOC. At the top of this screen you can see a number of links to different areas. The three main areas are, the WizIQ SL MOOC area, the Second Life area, and the Moodle Certificate area. There are links to the syllabus for the MOOC and a list of the live webinars. Both of these are on Google Drive. There are also links to the SL MOOC social networks, like the Facebook group, the YouTube playlist and the Twitter hashtag. To qualify for the Certificate of Participation in the MOOC, participants had to reflect upon the presentations on their blog pages, share these on the social networks and submit the link to their blogs on the Moodle portion of the MOOC. Instead of using one platform as our learning managing system LMS, we are now using a multi-platform virtual learning environment, or VLE. Why multilingual? Well, that's easy to answer. Virtual education has no geographical boundaries. A person in Anchorage, Alaska, can be online watching and participating in the same web conference, at the same time as somebody in Zvishavane, Zimbabwe, 9600 miles away. Although most educators have a grasp of the English language, not all of your future potential course participants will have. In the MOOCs organized by Dr. Nelly on IT for All, the initiative has been taken to include a freely translated version of the course instructions and help for the forums in Spanish. This allows catering to the vast majority of the participants from the Americas and the Iberian Peninsula. Most Portuguese speakers also understand written Spanish. The voluntary facilitators and moderators are able to communicate in English, Spanish, French, Italian, Japanese, Russian, Polish and German, amongst others. A project for the coming year is the use of subtitles in various languages in the CC content of the YouTube videos made from the MOOC presentations. So, there we have it, multi-platform, multilingual, virtual presentations in the multiverse. But why so many different platforms and apps? Is it really necessary? The answer basically is yes, it is necessary. No one LMS can cater for all the needs of a virtual learning environment. Let's take a look at the differences between the leaders. Moodle is the overall leader with the largest number of users, followed by Edmodo and Blackboard. Differences between these can be no better appreciated here. Edmodo outpaces Moodle by the number of total customers. But Moodle is clearly in the lead with the greatest number of users.
If we take a look at the social media followers we can see that Edmodo clearly has the most number of followers on both Twitter and Facebook. What do these figures mean? Which is the better LMS? It all depends upon what your specific needs are. Questions to be asked are Background Frame the search by asking about the institution's strategic direction and philosophy, as well as the needs of the various stakeholders. General LMS solution, cover the software's history, reliability, and reputation, as well as the availability of independent Help instructional designers and faculty adapt existing courses to the new LMS and develop courses from scratch. Teaching and learning tools, facilitate instruction and learning activities, particularly communication and collaborative activities within synchronous and asynchronous environments. The tools affect what students and instructors can view and control. Assessment features assist with the design and administration of assignments and tests, and the assessment and recording of student activities and performances. Accessibility features, address the principle of reasonable access and compliance with current accessibility laws. Administrative features, affect security, data management, and reporting, and help users administer their courses. Technical aspects, cover the basic software, hardware, and network requirements. Each institution's technology specialists will need to add additional, context-specific questions. Cost of ownership, help determine the total cost to acquire or lease and maintain the system for X students during each year of a three to five year contract. Let's get back to our specific case. Moodle as the core LMS. Moodle is a block-based LMS where one can choose from a variety of templates and blocks to build your course layout. Here you can see where the blocks are situated in a typical Moodle course. Our Moodle MOOC 6 course. In a two-tiered, left-right block layout, it's normal to place the administrative blocks on the left and the activity blocks on the right hand side. The center of the page is reserved for the course content. Course content is entered using the Moodle resources, label, page, book, file, folder, IMS content package, URLs, and the Moodle activities, assignment, attendance, certificate, chat, checklist, Choice, Database, External Tool, Feedback, Forum, Glossary, Hotpot, Lesson, Mind Map, Quiz, Scheduler, SCORM, Sloodle, Survey, Wiki, Quiz IQ Live Class, Workshop. You practiced using these resources and activities in weeks 2 and 3 on the TPA course. Descriptions of each are given when choosing for insertion in your course. Navigation in Moodle is very easy. The Moodle MOOCs are hosted by Moodle for teachers whose links are shown at the very top of the page, just as in a normal web page. At the center top, above the course content, is the breadcrumbs trail, used for visiting previous course pages and, below that, the course page tab area, which shows the tabs of all pages in the course. There's also a dedicated navigation block on their left hand side and an activities used in the course block on the right. Other blocks are, blog menu, blog tags, calendar, comments, community finder, course completion status, course, site summary, courses, custom course enrollment, 
Exabiz ePortfolio, Feedback, Latest News, Logged in User, Mentees, Messages, My Latest Badges, My Private Files, People, Quiz Results, and many, many more, obtainable by customizing the HTML block or by using the free Moodle plugins. You are practicing using blocks this week on the MPA course. A very important part of any Moodle course is the FAQ slash help forum for Moodle in general, the help desk and lobby for help on the course, and the individual support forums for help on every topic of the course. Moodle is very good at tracking participants. All this information can be seen in the administration block, including user information logs, user activity reports, course participation, activity completion, and grades. So, if Moodle is so great why use additional LMSs? And how many and which ones should we use? Personally, I would keep it to a minimum, choosing the ones that produce the required results and are easiest to use and, preferably, free. One of the greatest drawbacks of Moodle is that it does not contain a webcast module. There are various webcast apps available on the web, the most popular being Skype or Google Hangouts. The best I've come across, so far, is WizIQ which can be integrated into many popular LMSs. You can use WizIQ as a mini LMS for your own courses, but the best part about it is its webcast feature. You can schedule, hold, and view recordings of your webcast presentations and their constituent tutorials and videos. Webcasts can be viewed live by hundreds of participants, can have up to six co-presenters at a time and incorporate more participants as presenters, on a rotating invitation. Any participant can be invited to talk, present on camera, live. A complete list of your live presentations is shown in the courseware and there's a course feed page where participants can chat about individual classes or the course in general. Additional documents, such as lists of presenters, links to scheduled presentations etc. may be prepared on Google Drive where access may be regulated. Too many additional documents becomes unwieldy. Try to keep them to a minimum.